7.42, let's go through the papers now with our senior political commentator, Nigel Nelson, and the journalist and author, Susan Holder. Morning to you both, morning, Susan. Morning. morning. To the sun. To the sun. Bit of I... Prince Harry getting a bit of stick from an old mate. He is, apparently, and it is on the... Fr You're wrong, says the sun, but it's not just in the sun, it is in quite a lot of the papers, because Prince Harry has spoken out and said that he doesn't feel that the veterans um, that he served alongside, and including himself, were covered properly in the media and got the recognition and support and everything. And, unfortunately for Prince Harry, um, who kind of falls into this trap quite a lot, doesn't he, where he's meant to be focusing... I think he's never quite understood the brief of being royal, which is you focus the interest on the cause and of the other people who need to kind of have their voices and stories heard. Yeah, and and this, this is within the new documentary series he's made for Netflix, which is called... Um, uh, Invictus. Convictus, yeah, Heart oh. of Invictus. Yes. And, um, and it's... I, have to, I watched the first two, and they are brilliant when, they, when it gets on with telling the stories of these amazing vets. And, and the amazing be... job the Invictus Games does. Yes. But Harry then falls into the trap. He does fall. He has fallen about completely a into that trap yeah. of making it more about himself than it is about the causes he's meant to be uh, highlighting. And somebody who was on the plane who, that left Afghanistan with him, a double amputee, Ben McBean, I think he, left, he, he lost an arm and a leg. So, I mean, if, if we're going to listen to anybody about what the truth of all this is and, and how he feels about it, this is a good person to hear from. Um, it says he cannot understand what Harry is talking about, about the media not covering these stories and not the, the support not being there. And if, if somebody like Ben McBean can say that, I do think Harry should perhaps listen to that. Mm. Um, because it, it's a shame, because I do think, obviously, Invictus is a great thing that he does, mm. and I fully support that. And I do think that... It, yeah, it's just ridiculous that he can't focus on that. But when you're being paid 80 million to talk about things, you've got to kind of put a bit of spice in there, which is how he fell into the trap in the first place of coming out with, with bragging about his kills and yeah, everything else. He's yeah. knocking the British media and... Yeah, yeah I mean, I think just Wink is... is right. I mean, the whole thing is that it's nonsense that um, we, we didn't cover the, the wounded from Afghanistan. I went to Afghanistan a couple of times when Gordon Brown was Prime Minister and each time he made a special visit to the hospital at Camp Bastion to go and talk to um, uh, wounded soldiers. And that was fully covered. I mean, there was no question of not covering it. So I'm not quite sure what Andrew is going on about. It just seems to be his Harry, constant... Harry, Harry, Andrew. So, uh, sorry, it's easy Harry. To mix. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Sometimes easy to Harry's mix. Sometimes Harry's going on about on the basis that he just seemed to have a constant sort of beef against the media. Yeah, well, you can under I can understand why he doesn't like the media, and if he doesn't want to like the media, that's fine. But you do have top, to stick to the facts. But, yeah. you, you, can't just, the you facts. can't just make up the story to suit your own agenda. I mean, he, he, he was on the same plane as... as as this Ben who came back from Afghanistan, but Ben was so injured he didn't have, have any interaction with him. They actually met at an award ceremony hosted by the Sun newspaper, which was being kind of... So the very fact that that's how oh. they know each other was through the media, yeah. and how he's kind of forgotten that point. He forgets a lot of points, though, doesn't he? Yeah, he Bessie? does. It is, he as does. the Queen said, yes, rem you know... In recollections, recollections may, may vary. And, uh, yeah. um, but I have to say, uh, if you could, have you watched any of the documentary? I, w I watched the, the first one that he did. Yeah. And, uh, Inve do you mean... Uh, the not this one, oh, no. the first lot I can't bring the myself to watch it. The Invictus it. one can't. is made by a proper documentary maker yeah. who knows how to cut it together, and it, <laughs> it is heartrending. Yeah, but I and still... you end up weeping at it. Honestly, it's it is beautiful. I still well can't done. do it. But... I can't do it. I can't watch it. I couldn't watch the first one. I can't watch. I just can't. I know, it's funny, my sister said Too exactly much. the same thing. I, I said, have you watched the first um, of Harry's new documentary? Because uh, it's about Invictus, it's wonderful, about the, about the soldiers mm. and everything and their families. And she said, I can't bear it, I don't want to watch it, I can't yeah. bear anything about Harry. I'm no, afraid it's, that's it's, me too. I yeah, just can't I think, do I think it. we've all got to that point. I mean, the, the, the first lot of documentaries I did try and watch, and it just no, I lost that was the, mine. I lost the world to live. It was so boring. Yeah. They're just not as interesting as they think they are. Now he does have something to talk about, mm. and there is something to pr you know to promote that he should be doing. And again, he's kind of skewed it. Like, and him. I mean, he will blame the media. He will say, "I didn't quite say it like that," just like he said a lot of things. Mm. But actually, he he has to give them the information in the first place for them to be able to do that. And he does keep falling into that trap. Yeah. it's a shame. Um, to the Telegraph, Nigel, um, where we, uh, according to Penny Mordant, <laughs> need, and this will resonate with a lot of people, want to get back to national service. Yes, at least it'll be... It's not compulsory, though, this time. And you don't have to go into the army, either. Right. Um, but, yes, she's talking about a great British national service, and it's kind of based on the national citizen service that... Which David is already Cameron... up and running. 
which yeah, which is which is actually running running still that David Cameron set up for sixteen and seventeen year olds. Um, I mean, there are so many of these things out there. I mean, when I was a kid, that the the great volunteering things were voluntary services overseas yeah. um, and com community service volunteers, which were here. Uh, now they've become much more professional, and they're not just for young people; they're for they're for all sorts of people. So, it, it, in principle, yeah, it, I mean, lovely if people want to do it. The only thing I I, I'm not quite sure about uh, Penny Morden's idea is that rather than just volunteering to go and do it, she wants 16-year-olds to be automatically enrolled, forcing them to opt out if they don't want to yeah. do it. That's the only way to do it, I, isn't yeah, it? I, I, yeah, I think yeah. I don't But, 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 I don't but why, the, why that sort of compulsion? Because otherwise it won't happen. Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's like with but, the David Cameron scheme, hardly anyone signed no, up to it, have they? I wouldn't even know it was still going on. Yeah, no, but it's, it's, still, it's still happening, and a, a lot of kids are actually doing it. But my point is, if you want to volunteer, the whole essence of volunteering is that you do it willingly. Yeah, but it's although they call it a volunteering, the point is they don't really want it to be a volunteering scheme, do they? They want it to be but national if you've got service. The option to opt out. I do think actually it's the way to make everyone aware of it. If you're signed up to it, and then I mean we could you know we could argue back and forth on that, but I do think that actually would make people far more aware, and therefore if they've got the but kind of know, if they've I, got nothing kind of better to do, they might decide to just stick just, with it. Which, and you'd yes. get a lot more people that Or if you, want to, if you want to opt out, you have to prove you're doing something else. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, do, I do think you know, people will kind of... And that's it, compulsion. That doesn't yes, feel like... Yes, it's compulsory but volunteering, but and that's what we should that's have. that's not volunteering. Yeah. Yeah. No. But I do think, I think... I think the whole kind of calling it national service, and the fact it's Penny Mordant. Do you think she got the idea while she was holding the sword? Maybe. But I think people will think, oh, my God, we're, we're signing people up to military kind of things. And actually, it isn't that. It is... And I do think anything that gets young people out of the classroom mm. and into communities and understanding life that isn't their own with other experiences and other causes and issues is and not no, it's, a bad three, thing. it's three against one and Nigel. Under, it understanding that yes, there's just, an obligation. I, I cannot get around my head around the idea <laughs> you don't that like the press idea <laughs> is, is compelled to go and do it it's but that it's, bit that I find but it's, quite peculiar it's, it's the idea that they the, 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 the call it a volunteering scheme just to make it sound better mm. they don't want it to be a volunteering but you can scheme get out but, of but it. it shouldn't be compulsory you shouldn't have a situation <laughs> yes it should where, be it yeah, should be compulsory I wouldn't even have an okay. <laughs> if, it, if it was down to me, you see, I wouldn't even have an opt out. I'd just say you have oh, to do I, it. Mm, Unless there's a medical that. reason or whatever why you mm. can't do it, you have to do it. I mean, yeah. People think everything is voluntary now. I mean, going to school at all seems to be uh, a optional for some, a bit voluntary for some people. Oh, I don't really think I feel like today I'm going to work from home. We, we, there's too much voluntary things going on. I think we do need to have a bit more. But if you the will kids do resent this. it, if the kids resent being forced into it, then they'll opt where out. Is, where is the benefit in all this? Because of what they come out, they might. Kids always don't want. It. There's, yeah. there's always stuff they don't want to do. And when they come out the other side, it's they're actually. actually it was brilliant. Well, the about, I mean, the Duke and Member Reward Scheme is fantastic, mm. and kids want to do it. It's really gruelling, it's hard going, but kids actually sign up for it and want to do it. It seems to me that's the way to get. Do they? A lot, yes, they do. Look, I, I, I know. I know. Yeah, I, know. I, I, I think. I think uh, the Duke of Edinburgh scheme is brilliant, and I think there's loads of people that do it but only in certain areas. I mean, I don't know a single person from my school. Time who did Duke of Edinburgh? Oh, not yes, one. No, no, I don't. No, no I've, I've worked okay. with young people a lot, and a lot of them have done that kind of thing. They tend to be the ones that do like the whole kind of camping, sporty, mm. kind of bit more rugged kids. Do it. I did I give up after my bronze award. Yeah, that, well, there you go. But I think we've all have feet. we all not signed our kids up for things and gone, you'll enjoy it when you get there. Yeah. Come yeah. along. We've all done that, and I think it's yeah. just a bit like that, really. And I think there's nothing wrong with that. No. Okay. Well, we've got to leave it there, you two. Nigel, Susan, go and battle it out in the green room. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>